Hi Internet Strangers, Chris Delion here of HobbyGameDev.com and today I want to show you how to click on a thing within Unity, have it check and see if a certain script is on it, and if so, to call a function on that script. Now some reasons why you might want to do this, if you want to use like the cursor, like a point and click gun, you could have it so when you click on bottles, they would shatter and play a particle effect and play the sound effect for glass shatter and remove the object. Uh, if you wanted to uh, select a unit in a tactics game, in an RTS game, an RPG game, you could click directly on a unit to interact with it in that way. You could click on switches to flip them. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff you can do with this. Uh, and so like here in Lighthook, collaborative game, we're building Unity this summer with some friends. Uh, I can move my view around, and when I click on a door, it's checking to see is there a door script on the object that I've clicked on, and if so, call the open script on it. Now the door script here is actually written by Chris Anthony, someone who's not in me. All it needs to know is what's the function I want to call and what's the script I want to look for, and if so, I can let that object script take care of itself. And likewise, I can detect if what I click on isn't a door, do something else. So in this case, our core, our core movement is to grapple to any wall, and if what I click on isn't a door, it grapples to it. If I click on a door, it opens up the door. So let's look at how we do, we're going to do that. Let's do it in a brand new project so you don't have to wonder, is there something else in there? I'm going to call this click on stuff for our new project. We don't need to import any packages. We're going to use the baseline functionality, no special textures or anything. I'm going to keep it in 3D. Create. All right, so here's our totally new, totally blank project. And all we have right now is a camera. So let's quickly go to game object, create other terrain. It's going to give us a ground sort of background. Okay, I'm going to hold down my alt key, left click and drag to orbit my view around to the other side. I'm going to middle mouse drag to uh, pan my view up and down. By the way, if you're not using the mouse or two button with a wheel for Unity or 3D tools, I recommend it. Uh, so with this tool selected for terrain, I could use like this raise and lower stuff. And I could, I could paint some hills. I could hold down shift and lay down some valleys or whatever. But there's terrain here. That's all that matters. Okay. Let's next add a uh, game object, create other cube. Okay. I'm going to... I pressed uh, W to make sure my move widget is on. I want to move this. Uh, I want to just make sure it's above the ground level and visible. Let's also add a sphere. Okay, there's another sphere. And I'm going to hold Alt, left click, and drag in. Got to get a sense for where I am in 3D space. I just want these visible and above ground. Now, also, so by default, I can, see, I can see if I click on the game tab, my camera is like sort of at a weird, arbitrary, straight on corner angle of the terrain. Let's use the one we have in the scene. So I'm going to select main camera here, game object, align with view. Uh, now, if I go to game, I can see how it's going to look in game. I'll still see it's kind of a black silhouette. So we need a light. I'm going to go back to scene, game object, create other. It's at a directional light. And we don't really care where it's positioned in space. We'll just move it out of the way because it angles all that matters there. We just want to be able to see. So when I press play up here, there we go. I should see there's my cube. There's my sphere. Here's some land. Now let's go ahead and let's even duplicate that sphere. Edit. Duplicate or of course you control D, Command D if you're in a Mac. Move it over here. There we go. So we got two spheres. We got a box. And let's let's name one of these spheres. Let's name it uh, Jonathan. Let's call it John for short. J-O-N. Just so we can experiment with the fact that we're gonna get the name what we click on first. It won't matter if it's a cube or sphere or what, it's just gonna get the object's name. But by default, those are cube and sphere and so on. So we're gonna add a new script to detect what it is that we're clicking on. In fact, I'm gonna go to go to uh, Assets, create, C-sharp script. And now we want to name it right here the first time I have a chance to name it. And I'll show you why in a second. Let's call this uh, click action. And as soon as I press enter, then it's filled in the public class name on the script, which has to match the name of my asset. I'm going to double click it to open up in model develop. And while it opens, I'll explain that if I accidentally forgot to rename my asset when I created a new one, my new script, uh, I would then have to go into the script and change where here it says public class to match the new name of my script, or you're going to get some special errors. And you run into that a few times. It doesn't affect materials or other stuff in your project. It just affects scripts, but it drives people who are new to Unity a little nutty. All right, so there, this matches the name of a file, so I'm in good shape. I don't know. Start is the initialization stuff. We don't need that here. Void update gets called every single frame. And so uh, we can use that to, to handle our click behaviors. Although, one thing to note, and we're just going to go slow just for the first moment, debug log. Let's just print out um, update called, exclamation point, control less to save. May the asterisk go away here. Click back in Unity. Uh, it's gonna Now, we haven't put the script on anything yet. So if I press play, we should see debug log stuff down here, but it's not on anything. We first have to add that script to something in the scene. So I'm going to click on main camera. I'm going to drag click action down here below where it says add component. And I should see this new click action script is on the camera. Now we're going to refer to the camera actually 
through camera.main, a global way to refer to it. So in this case, we don't actually have to put the camera directly or the script on the main camera itself, but logically it kind of makes sense because this is like our click functionality, which is sensibly tied to how the camera is positioned in space. So we're going to leave it there. With this script added, so we should see it in the inspector when main camera selected. Now when I press play, now we'll see down here update called. If I click on that, I'll see it's actually spamming the console log because update's getting called 30-ish times a second, maybe 60, whatever it is. And so that's all good. This is now being called. Uh, let's now wrap that. If input, get mouse button down. Of course, get mouse button would be used if I wanted to hold down the mouse button, get mouse button down will just be activated the single frame when I click it. It wants to know an integer for which mouse button to refer to. I'm gonna use zero, which is for the uh, left mouse button or, or only mouse button if you're on a one button mouse, which shouldn't be in Unity one button mouse. So this should only now fire this when I click the mouse button. Let me just confirm when I press play. Okay, there's nothing down here. I click, now it says update called. Good, okay. Let's start uh, going a little bit faster. Now the first thing I'm going to do is define a ray, let's say two mouse, camera.main. This is where I'm using sort of a global reference to the main camera, even though our script is on the camera. So there's other ways we could get to it, but this will work. Okay. And now what we want to see is uh, we're looking for screen point to ray. Okay. And by the way, I just typed in SC, autocomplete lets me click these off the list. And now that wants to know a position. And that position is going to be input dot mouse position. Okay, all this is describing is a point in space where the, or it's actually a ray, so a location in space where the camera is, and then a ray towards where the mouse is pointing at. The next thing we're going to need is we're going to need a data structure for uh, raycast hit. I like to call these RH info, RH for raycast hit. And that's going to get populated with information about our click. The point in space it clicked on, the object, the normal, pointing away from the surface it clicked on, all that information is going to be right there for us. And the other thing we're checking is say did hit equals, and this time we're going to fill it in using a physics ray cast. This is the part that's kind of doing the real work. This is the part that's doing the check in space. And when I open that parenthesis, I can use up and down arrows to scroll between different versions of ray cast that take different arguments. So you'll see there's all kinds of forms. You can manually specify origin and direction if I want to use this object's position and direction in space or whatever. But since we already have this ray for the mouse, we're going to use that. So uh, version 7 is going to meet our needs here. We don't need one of the other options like, see, these have a layer mask. I could use that to control layers. So I could click through cloud cover. I could click through GUI elements. I could click through other kind of things. But we don't need that right now. We're going to use version 7, which is going to have a, so it takes the ray to point at uh, from where and towards what. Raycast info is going to be populated with information what we click on. And distance is how far it's going to look before it gives up. Okay, and that ray is two mouse. Uh, now, because the second argument uses out for the raycast info, that just means it's passing it by parameter. Distance, 500.0, F, 500 meters is plenty. Now, the way this works, physics raycast only passes back a true or false. A true if it found something when it clicked. So if I click away from like the land over here in the no, no, empty space, it's gonna return false. But other than that, all the information is getting populated into this raycast hit that we defined right here. So after the fact, we'll be able to refer to RH info to get information about where we clicked. So let's say if did hit else, I'm just going to make an empty structure here. In the else case, let's debug log. Clicked on empty space. And if did hit, then let's instead, let's print out the name of what we clicked on. RH info dot Collider. Now, Collider is its own separate data structure, different than a, you can see this is a type public collider. It's not the same thing as a game object. We can get the game object directly from it if you're more comfortable with that, if you've seen Unity before. But a lot of the same things, like the name, we can still get straight from it. So this will print the name of the collider that we clicked on. Let's throw in some pluses and uh, some two dashes here. Let's also print out rhinfo dot point. So this is going to be the name of the object that I've clicked on. This is going to be the point in 3D space as a world coordinate, x, y, and z, where my click happened. So if I wanted to have a particle spark explosion appear somewhere, I would do it at rhinfo.point, because that's specifically where my raycast from my camera hit. And this is going to give me the name of the object that I clicked on. So I press play. 
By the way, every time I go back and forth between these two, you gotta press Control S if you're on Windows or Command S on Mac to make that asterisk go away, save your script. Otherwise, you're not gonna see your changes when you get back over to the editor. Uh, and now over here, I shouldn't see anything down here yet. When I start clicking, I can click out here and it says click on empty space. I can click on this, it says terrain with a coordinate. Here it says cube, sphere, and John, since again, I named this sphere John. As well as notice these coordinates, if I click up on the hill, then that middle, that Y argument gets a little bit higher, four, five meters, so on. If I click down here on the flat part of the low ground, I'm seeing a Y value of zero because it's a very low to the ground. And these figures are kind of somewhere in between, depending on where I click on that sphere. If I click near the top of this cube, I get 2.5, click near the side, 1.8. Your values are probably different based on wherever you put your shapes, but it's pretty cool. I can now click on things and see the name of what I've clicked on. But the name is only so useful. So while if I was going to be hacky about this, I could actually just check and compare, like, if Collider's name equals player, do such and such. If Collider name equals terrain, do such and such. That's not a very general way to handle things. You know, you don't want to have everything in your scene named based on some sort of strict code to be able to, you know, parse that name and make sense out of it. Uh, it's going to make way more sense to check and see which component scripts are on it. Because the way Unity's hooked up, you add component scripts to things like camera, GUI layer, uh, sphere collider, mesh render, and so on, to then call functionality on those component scripts. Before we do this next part, let's go ahead and save our scene, which we haven't done yet. So I press Control S, Command S if you're on Mac. I'm just going to call this test scene, or test area, doesn't really matter. But that's just a reminder that uh, your scene or your layout and all of its connections are separate from the project. So don't forget to save your scene, or you're not going to have your progress you've been making. All right, so we've got, uh, here's our scene. And let's now add a new script, separate component, that we're going to be able to attach to sphere and cube. So when we click on it, we'll destroy them. Okay, game object, or I'm sorry, assets, create, C sharp script. Let's call this destroyable. Okay, once again, I had the name it the first time to make sure public class destroyable matches. If it doesn't, it's going to give me crashes or, or bugs when I try to run it. And I'll have to change the word here to match the name of the file if I renamed it after the fact. And for this one, we're not going to need start or update because we actually don't need stuff happening every frame. We're just going to have a single public function that's going to allow it to be called from other components, other objects. Public void, uh, remove me. And let's go ahead and uh, do a debug log and say destroyables remove me function is being called on name. We'll print out the name of the game object that this script has been added to. And then we're going to call destroy. Oh, there we go. Game object. And game object is also referring to the game object the script is directly added to. Okay. And now let's put this destroyable script on, like I said, this sphere, not John sphere, but one of the spheres. So I've, I've selected this sphere and I've got this destroyable script. I'm going to click and drag it under here where it says add component. I can now see destroyable script is on the inspector for sphere. I'm going to do the same thing for cube, select it in the hierarchy, click and drag destroyable script under here below add component. I can see there's my destroyable script under inspector for it. Okay. And now over here in click action, instead of just printing out these names, we could delete that line. It's just debug information. We're going to see if we can get that script off the object we've clicked on. So destroyable is the name of the script or component we're looking for. I'm just going to call it dest script. Doesn't really matter. Uh, rhinfo dot collider. Here we're going to use get component less than destroyable. Okay, and that's less than destroyable greater than parentheses. It's kind of a weird notation. It's a C sharp thing. You get used to it. Uh, but that's the notation we use to say this is going to be a handle on that component if it exists on the object, that's RH info collider, that we clicked on. Notice too, we're doing this only in the case that we've received a positive or a true response back from physics raycast. That's so we don't try to get a destroyable script off an object that doesn't exist, that's not populated yet. Okay, speaking of existing, we now want to check and see if there's a destroyable script, which remember this is the same as asking if destroyable script is not equal to null, then destroyable script call, what do we call it, remove me. We can call this function directly on the script of the object that we clicked on because we made it a public void, okay, or public rather. So it's going to check and see if I've clicked the mouse this frame, the left button, it's going to get a screen raycast from the camera towards the mouse, position indicated, 
It's going to create an empty data structure to fill with information about where you've clicked. It's going to get true or false for whether or not something within 500 yards, 500 meters, gets clicked on in that heading. And if so, it's going to fill in this information about the hit. If it did hit something, it's going to print out the name of what it hit. It's going to print out the 3D location it hit, all in the, all in the console line down at the bottom. It's going to check and see, is there a destroyable script on the thing I clicked on? And if so, then we're going to call remove me on it. Now, in this case, you know, this function's pretty bare bones, right? We really could have just called destroy on the game object of the collider directly over here. This is a nice way to do it because, of course, this generalizes better to if we wanted to have an explosion particle effect play, if we want to play sound effects, do all kinds of other fancy business, whenever you click on things to destroy them, we could do it inside destroyable. Or let's say we want to improve this code so it has a health value and takes multiple clicks to destroy something, you could do it inside destroyable instead of having to have that work inside your click action logic. Okay, so make sure both those components are saved, control S, control S in each tab, back in Unity, and when I press play, now if I click on terrain, it just gives me the terrain info. If I click on the cube, it removes it, it says destroyables remove me function is being called on cube. If I click on John, the sphere, it just says John in the coordinate, terrain, terrain in the coordinate, click on sphere, destroyable remove me function is being called on sphere. So there we go. And like I say, those could be doors, those could be switches, those could be characters to select in a, in a sort of board game even. Uh, but this is all there is to it. Uh, and, you know, we could do this conditionally. So let's say, okay, what we checked here was that if it's destroyable script, do one thing. Otherwise, let's add another else condition here. We can repeat this test. So if I look at my terrain, for example, I see it has a terrain script element on it. It's also called terrain, but we could call this something else just to not get confused. Ground, doesn't matter, that's the point. All I can do over here is I can say terrain, terror script, it's kind of a habit of how I name those, RH info, collider, get component, uh, terrain. Okay, if terror script, then here I could say, let's do a debug log for now, debug log. Clicked on terrain, do terrain action stuff. Okay. So again, so if it failed the test to see if it is a destroyable script on it, then instead it's going to check and see is there a terrain script, and if so, print this out. And so you know, my, my, why might you want to do this? Well, let's say we had a little simple tactics kind of game or a tank or RTS game or something. I could click on a unit that had selectable properties to it, select it, and then when I clicked on the terrain, clicked on terrain, do terrain action stuff it can respond to redirect a unit to the location or rhinfo.point where I clicked. So there's all kinds of ways you can use this. It's really not that much code. I just want to make sure you understand it real deeply and thoroughly. Control us to save my project, uh, but that's really all it we got to do for now. Um, you can check any script this way, any component. You can call any public function on it uh, or check, of course, any public variables. Really powerful thing to be able to do in Unity, relevant to all kinds of games and genres. Hopefully it helps you all out. Uh, it's Chris Dunn for Hobby Game Dev, and I'll have some more content for you all soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.